As you probably know, filling the frame of your subject creates impact. It tells the viewer straight away what the main subject is, what your intention with the image is, and confronts the viewer head on in a bold and direct way. It's a highly effective way of presenting a subject then, and makes for a good photograph. It removes distractions and avoids any weighted space in the frame. It's especially effective therefore on portraits, creating powerful imagery which often captures the true personality of the sitter. We often tailor these sort of compositions with longer lenses, longer focal lengths that allow that frame filling experience. As beginners, this is often the first lesson we learn, to fill the frame. We easily make the mistake of shooting too wide, not informing the viewer of what you're actually seeing and instead allowing that subject to get lost in the frame. However, I would file this fill the frame advice along with the other traditional wrong piece of advice of always shooting with the sun over your shoulder. This was advised back in the day to help achieve correct exposures, getting plenty of light on the subject, avoiding underexposed backlit errors and making sure the average photographer got consistent results with minimal effort and skill. This of course is bad advice in general. Front lighting, as it is called, is, is very uninspiring. It's flat, unflattering, and creates no depth or contrast in the scene. It generally leaves the subject looking very two-dimensional, therefore, with no form or modeling. So once you start taking consistent results, you learn in chapter two of the big book of photography not to shoot with the sun behind you, and instead shoot with the sun off to one side. This light from this direction is more flattering, it creates more contrast with the use of shadows and is often the best light for a typical landscape view. Also in chapter two then, in the section on composition, it should say, don't fill the frame with your subject. Now, of course, this is contradicting the beginner advice we first mentioned, where we said having your main subject too small in the frame is wrong. Doing this can lead to including unwanted distractions, and we don't want to do that. No, instead, we're using negative space, which is using empty space in the frame to draw the eye to the main subject in a positive way. This main subject, therefore, doesn't need to fill the frame. Quite the opposite. It can instead only occupy a quarter of the frame if you want, even less sometimes. There's no real set rule for this. This negative space is a composition technique copied from art, traditional art, you know, paints and stuff. Haven't I said that somewhere before sometime? Anyway, the negative is the space around your main subject, leaving your subject as the positive element in the frame. Of course, it also creates those vases, faces, faces, vases effects. You see in graphic black and white art depictions, but that's not what we're talking about here. Using negative space then can create very simple, minimal results. In fact, your pictures require this. The negative space needs to be neutral and quite bland to contrast with the main subject. Therefore, empty skies are ideal for this, or snow-covered landscapes. You're looking for neutral areas that occupy the main area of the frame, yet are not the key feature in it. But using this space often means placing your subject near the edge of the frame. Not always, but often. This therefore can break another rule, the one where you aren't meant to place the main subject on the edge of the frame. The usual advice here is to leave some space breathing space between a subject and the edge of the frame. This makes sure the viewer knows that this element was actually meant to be included in the composition and not just an accidental afterthought that just ended up clipping the edge of the frame. Taking this into account then reveals that this composition technique doesn't work on all subjects. Your main subject needs to be strong enough to be isolated this way. The negative space needs to be, well, negative or neutral enough not to distract from the main subject. And then finally, the placement of this key subject has to be considered and precise to work in this manner to create the dramatic end result. Trees are a good subject then, as can be interesting horizons. The key feature can be a, a single subject or a line of horizon placed high or low in the frame. Dark subjects are also good and can contrast nicely with the neutral area, but strong, bold colours will also be effective subjects. It's a bold way to compose your images then, and requires a certain amount of confidence on your behalf. 
If you're going to attempt these, you have to be confident in the execution. It's no good doing these half-heartedly. You have to commit and be willing to capture something different. And in a way, go against the grain. Do all the things you're not meant to. It's a harder technique to achieve good results than filling the frame. That's a pretty easy one to do, yet can be too direct sometimes, too static. Your subject here just becomes, well, a basic subject, and not enough is revealed about the scene or subject in context. It's like a record shot. Here it is, a subject. Nothing else, nothing else to add. With negative space then, you're making a statement. You're telling more of a story. You're including the environment or a taste of the environment around the subject. You're revealing that this subject stands alone. It's isolated or can be seen or visualized this way. It's small within the overall environment, but it's still a strong and formidable feature. That's the story you're telling. It's saying this subject has character and presence and can stand out on its own, in its own right. It can have impact and dominance without filling the frame, without being viewed in a frame-filling context. This technique is as equal and as bold as its opposite then. This effect doesn't weaken the subject or the overall picture in any way, and done effectively will often create a result that a typical frame-filling view just can't match. That's negative space then, a highly effective tool in the composition toolbox. Consider its importance, use it where you can, don't force the effect though, but be aware of its impact. Well, this use of negative space is just one of the many composition techniques that I discuss in my E6 subscription in videos, podcasts, and e-guides. There are over 100 e-guides to download as part of the basic subscription package and many more in the additional premium pack. Click the link below in the description for more details and to subscribe yourself. You know you want to. Well, next time I have some advice on how to compose your scenes, how to frame up those views, how to determine the best format to shoot your views with a little gadget. That sounds fun, doesn't it? I'll see you next time.